What can you do if you feel like you've hit rock bottom in life? Yeah, we got to talk about this viral Reddit post. Um, you know, I hope that it's useful for anybody who's going through this themselves or uh, has gone through this, as well as the comment section being useful because uh, this is a very serious thing. And it is unfortunate. And this is happening to, uh, to young men everywhere. But perhaps, you know, it, it's it's... There's an additional layer of relatability when it's happening to a young Asian guy, right? Yeah, so, I mean, I think the internet weighs in. We're going to go through some of the advice. If you have a friend or you've gone through this or anything like that or you're just interested to see what other people are going through, hopefully this video is helpful. So please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys and let me know if this is an interesting video. Um, but, yeah, I mean, check out Smala Sauce at the same time, guys. Uh, if you guys have a chance to... Uh, it's a really good finishing oil, and orders are going out in November. All right, so let's start off this post. This guy said, uh, I'm a 22-year-old male. I'm Hmong. I grew up in a dysfunctional family. I was abused when I was young, raised by a single mother, barely graduated high school, suffering from debilitating mental issues. He lists off some of them that he's been diagnosed with, severe depression, uh, dysthymia, anxiety, anhedonia, agoraphobic, suicidal ideation, I'm not really asking for advice. Recently went back to therapy and currently trying to turn my life around, but I just want to know what others have done to change their situation. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, I would say, first of all, the last line is hopeful. Right, because he he's, already, he's already trying to do something. Yeah, he's right? like, I'm trying to do something. I'm going to therapy, first of all. You know, so shout out to him, you know, for uh, even just being open to hearing what people on the internet say. Because it is hard to take advice from the internet. Like we always say, we don't know that much about you. Uh, we can't see your face. We can't see your family. We can only go off of what they tell you. You know. What yeah. I mean? I mean, it kind of makes me feel bad in a sense that uh, immediately everybody's born into a different situation in this life, right? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, what he listed off, it doesn't sound like a good set of cards to be dealt. Obviously, certainly not necessarily the worst in the world either. There's people being born into war zones and things like that. Right, right. But certainly not a, an ideal set. Yeah. A very, very suboptimal set of cards to be dealt, I right? Mean, yeah, but of, of course, uh, you know, when you compare yourself to only people who are doing better than you or uh, other people who are from a, started off in a better position, of course your life, it can definitely look bad. But yeah. but you know what the interesting thing is, Andrew? There are people who are, are like from very wealthy families that are still depressed. Like yeah. how many stories, I don't like really want to say it, but I even there's some famous like billionaire fund managers, Andrew, their kids- uh, you know, went through some crazy things. There's a, there's a lot of crazy yeah. stories. I don't even want to get into it. Yeah. But I'm talking about like children of billionaires whose like life spiraled out of control. Depression does not discriminate. You know, it can, it can reach anybody. Um, for me, uh, initially I would say, you know, uh, I can't relate to obviously all these issues, you know, but for me, I guess maybe at a time, where I was a little bit more angry or like ungrateful for the life is like uh, when you're a young teenager and you feel like you're not getting treated the way you want to and you're kind of ungrateful for even like your life situation or America or this country, you know, and you feel like the world is against you. Uh, in a way, it's like this country is still really good if you can make a change. And I think that the fact that therapy is that available or like a gym is that available to go work out at? Or a martial arts class, is that available? Or all these health foods are that available? Or, or the fact that you were raised in America, which is an English-speaking country, a lot of the self-help content that's really deep and in-depth available with all the infographic charts on YouTube and a variety of other platforms is in English. Yeah. Like, oh, a lot of the world's best info in 2023 is available in, in, yeah, in English. Yeah, there's a lot of bad content also in English, but there's also a lot of remedies in English too. So, you know, it's gladly that, you know, you live in this country. So you have a shot. Yeah. You have a shot is what I'm saying. I would say immediately, I would say definitely take a look at your options for therapy and make sure that the system that you're in that gave you therapy, I'm assuming it's government sponsored in this situation, matched you up with the right therapist. Mm. You know, one thing I've learned Andrew, after watching a lot of different fitness gurus or different sort of success gurus, not all of them speak to everybody the same way, right? Like they have some similar information. They have some dissimilar information, but the delivery method is always going to be different and different delivery methods are going to connect with different people with different upbringings. Mm. Like for me, I always like this guy, Brandon Carter. He doesn't even get a ton of views. I know that he is well known in certain worlds, but like, I like the way that he talks about success. So you're just saying find a messenger that 
relates to you. Yes, yes, because yes. there's a lot of people out there doing self help material that is generally positive and sort of true, but there's just a lot of different ways that they're delivering. It. Like for example, David Goggins, Andrew, who's also famous ex Navy SEAL. So it, it doesn't appeal to me the way he just is like, you know, get up, just run another twelve miles. I'm just like. Ah, I don't know. I'm not saying it's not for the people where that helped them. That's amazing, but that's not. That's not touching you. That's okay. not the guru that I All want right. to follow. For me, um, I just think that um, also potentially get a blood panel test. Like uh, this, these are baseline things because there could, you know, you never know what imbalances there may or may not be. You, you got to get to. Uh, there's a lot of different like issues. There's like physical inherent ones, and then there's ones that are driven by the environment in some combination of the two, mm -hmm. right? So I think there's a lot of things to do it. And um, yeah, anyway, guys, we're just going to get into the comments section. Um, like we said, everybody's situation is unique. But I think once you start to see what other people went through and other people's recommendations, you have more options in your mind. Um, the first one says, listen, as much as people ish on the whole go to the gym trope, that's exactly what I did after my divorce and it helped immediately. Yeah. And I think, luckily, uh, America is a place full of gyms. Maybe the most gyms in the entire world, right? Dude, there's a gym down the block, man, for sure. Um, and it could be, there's cheap gyms, there's middle-tier gyms, expensive I, gyms, low-tier gyms, gyms I, I for whatever about, vibe uh, is your tribe. This guy, Jim Quick, um, shout out to Jim, but uh, he calls it small, simple steps, and he always asks you, what's the tiniest step you can take to achieving your goals right now? Like, ask yourself that question. What's the tiniest thing you can do to start making a change? And sometimes just getting a gym membership, even if you don't use it right away. Getting gym shoes ready and you put them by the door. That's like, even if you don't do it that day or the next day or the day after, it's like, you're ready to go once you're ready. You know right, what I mean? Right, And here's are just some of the benefits of the gym. And, uh, you know, and I'll, I, David, this I'll tell you this. I never believed in these until I started going to the gym five times a week. Right. And, and I was against the gym. No, it sounds kind of like a gym bro tech. Just get buff, dude. And I think that when you just say, oh, just work out, it does sound stupid. But once you go there and you do it and you, you know what they're trying to say. You got to find somebody who goes to the gym that you relate to that has lived your life or is an aspirational image. And I, for me, maybe being more of a technical person, I needed for people to break it down for me in this way. Andrew, going to the gym reduces your body fat, which is correlated with depression. Like, uh, that's literally, there's a lot of science behind it. I'll pop up some of the charts behind it. I don't want to get too much into it. It releases dopamine, which affects all motivation levels. Andrew, it also releases more testosterone. As a guy, you need testosterone, right? Mm -hmm. It stimulates norepinephrine, which regulates emotions. It produces BDNF, which creates new neural pathways. It improves serotonin production, which helps us stay calm. Mm -hmm. It in releases endorphins, which elevates mood. And of course, like we said, it increases testosterone, which may treat depression. It also uh, pushes more oxygen to your brain. Like, you imagine if your, your pipes to your brain are clogged. You know, they're still flowing, but they're not as flow. You know, the, the pipes are not as wide open as they could be. Mm -hmm. It's like getting the pipes clean because mm -hmm. you're, you're just speeding up your system. Um, other people are talking about the serotonin. You're releasing serotonin when your muscles have been burnt and you are uh, re enjoying a relaxing shower to come back down. And then now your muscles are torn and your muscles will need to rebuild themselves. That actually mm -hmm. releases serotonin throughout your system. Right. Um, I think one thing that really helped me, Andrew, trying to get into working out is I realized that like, I, I'm not speaking for everybody because some people may have, like we said, there's blood imbalance issues. There's a lot of genetic things in the, in the double helix going on. But a lot of people don't understand being happy to some extent or a large extent is just a release of chemicals. Right. Dopamine. But, but the thing is a lot of people, they want to take, for example, pills, Mm. drugs to mm. to force open those chemical buckets to release into the body that's why you almost inevitably feel happiness when you take certain substances right yeah there's a really good book it was an audio book that i listened to okay to be fair i listened to the summary of this audio book but it says it, the mind the body goes and the mind follows and it's about how being physical doing physical activity it's walking running jogging yoga sitting there, meditation, stretching, it actually can help work out trauma by 
re- by releasing dopamine and getting your blood flow differently right. and controlling your body. And it just ma- it can actually help your mind versus the other way around where most people are like, oh, right. the mind controls what the body and, and this goes back to my initial point where I was like, make sure you get a therapist that understands that, that's checking in with you on your exercise schedule. Because if somebody's like, I'm not just saying, I'm just saying if your therapist, maybe they're not end up working out or whatever, they're out of shape and they're not adding that element into it, that could be the whole missing element. Yeah. It yeah. could be. And, and different people are different. Some people are more physical people and some people are more mental people. But I think regardless, anybody will tell you, anybody who's gone on a run or a jog will tell you that doing those things help. Yeah, and you might not like it at first because you know you're pushing cortisol through your body because your cortisol is stress levels, but your body needs to feel some measure. It's like cortisol is not too, like too high unregulated levels of cortisol are bad, Yeah, but you need to push your body to some extent, right? And pushing Mm -hmm. your body will cause stress. Mm -hmm. Um, Somebody was saying, listen, your brain will ultimately, uh, all the chemical talk and all the science aside, your brain releases stuff to make you feel good, like endorphins, which is what causes a runner's high. So basically, like, when you push your body, your body will want to reward you with things that will keep you alive and healthy, and getting stronger will do that because that, uh, and Andrew Huberman talks a lot about this, it all kind of goes back to our core as, like, cavemen, right? Like, what we were doing, like, the way we, some people in modern society are now, you know, you're sitting in a dark room in front of three screens, no human generations in previous, uh, like, you know, eons or millennia did that. But it's like, we're in that situation now, so we gotta do what we can break out of it. Um, This guy had a really interesting comment, Andrew, he related to it. He said, listen, I went through a lot of that stuff myself. I grew up in a dysfunctional family. I had an abusive drunk father. I had terrible siblings. I had depression. I did not go to therapy. I didn't even seek help. I just worked a really bad job I was unhappy at. I didn't graduate college. I felt like I wasn't going anywhere. Anyway, I got to the point where I started to work on myself a lot. I started Mm. eating super healthy with nothing but whole foods. I started working out four or five days a week in the gym. You'd be surprised at how transforming your body morphs you into a new person. Um, This guy started watching all this stuff. He goes, as cheesy as it sounds, even simple pickup helped my social skills. Mm. Like, cause that's what spoke to me. And I ended up taking action. I reconnected with old friends and then I met new friends. I basically just slowly but surely pulled myself out of the gutter. Mm. And um, I think here's the thing about like, when you work on yourself, there's a lot of like cascading effects because you're now, not only are you lifting, right? We're, we already just went through all the chemicals, the good chemicals that it's releasing organically through your body, right? Into your brain and the rest of your body. But you're managing your sleep schedule. Yeah. You're managing your nutrition. A lot of the people don't know that Andrew, even your nutrition can cause brain fog and things like that, right? Hey man, you know what happens when you work out really hard that day? You go to sleep early. And you know what happens when you go to sleep? You can't stay up on the dark corners of the internet. And you can't even stay up because you've already depleted that bucket exactly. that you need to replenish and recharge your battery. But exactly. you've depleted it in a valid way, right? Um, somebody said, please delete social media, fix your diet and sleep, and then hit the gym in that order, of course. Somebody who said, you know, it's just a trial and error and balance of having fun figuring out how you want to spend your money and working out. I I feel like this, man, a lot of it is like you're juggling a couple things, right? And, and being disciplined means you're juggling things and you're like sort of sacrificing and things like that. But occasionally you might want to splurge. Mm. And that's almost like uh, if you're juggling using a, like a turbo boost cheat code where like maybe there's a gust of wind that like throws everything you're juggling up in the air, holds it up so you can kind of get like a break. Mm-hmm. Like if you're juggling everything and, and you're having trouble handling it and you feel like you're about to get wobbly, just hit that turbo boost button. Maybe that is taking a vacation. Maybe that is buying something that you really wanted that like doesn't make fun financial sense you know what i mean like these little you have to like i guess you're juggling you're being disciplined you're making the right sacrifices that a man needs to make but occasionally give yourself some leeway right 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 um somebody was just saying like you said andrew good mindset doesn't be it beget good behavior good behavior begets good mindsets so it's more about it it can can either or can affect each other man somebody said i hired a pt i got in shape and then i booked a three-week trip to europe that helped me tremendously to see a different world other people were talking about going outside of america taking a trip going back Mm. to asia going to latin america just seeing Uh, something different seeing a completely different society yeah top down bottom up yeah maybe maybe you want to go to a country that's even safer than america one that's even more better rate like you go to a city and 
<clears throat> Sweden, Iceland, you know, I don't know. It's just something. Yeah, different things for different people. I, I really recommend taking a look at different success gurus and success channels and find the one that speaks to you. Yeah, even listen. We can sit there and be like, yo, these success gurus, some of them are fake, some of them are embellishing. Exaggerating how, what their net worths are, their uh, But struggles. they're all using the similar information. Nobody's, they're not doing their own research coming up with their own facts. You're saying nobody said eat chips, watch shows all day. These and- are all things that most people agree with. It's just the delivery message is different. Now, however it affects your, I wouldn't buy their courses. I'm not investing in their coins, but I'm saying a lot of their information is essentially on point. Yeah, I would say for myself, man, cleaning up the diet was huge. Uh, cleaning yeah. up the diet, you, for me, I, maybe it's because I had a very messy diet, so I had a lot to clean up. But yeah. I would say you'd be surprised at the different chemicals your body releases when you, when you eat different foods. Yeah. I, I think the key, the cheapest thing, the easiest thing is to work out, do some exercise, cost you no money, and then, like, if your life is really that bad, right? I mean, sometimes the only thing you can do is leave you know move out of your situation but i'm saying that's that's down the line because not everybody can do that right away but definitely should think about uh yeah anyway guys let us know what you would recommend to the uh the op the original poster uh and i just want this to exist as like a really useful video because i realize man there's a lot of people that are going through a lot of things and when you don't have systems you don't have cousins that you're close to or that you relate to or the same age as you. And sometimes in an Asian family, sometimes you're not even close with your cousins anyway. Like in the Asian culture, people don't even feel comfortable verbalizing this type of like older brick bro coaching. And they may, may be concerned with their own lives or going not have gone through it themselves. Um, really, really useful advice there. Obviously, like I said, I can't comment on anybody's specific situation. But, uh, you know, I think that these posts are good. It's good to get the info out there. Guys, uh, wish the best for everybody. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think this guy should do in the comment section below or what you've been through or what you've seen other people go through and how do they get out of it. What to do if you feel like you've hit rock bottom in life. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.